Unity. Unity. Yeah. One body, one mind. One mind, one spirit. One spirit, one mind. Gotta make the world feel it. One body, one mind. One mind, one spirit. One spirit, one mind. Gotta make the world feel it. One body, one mind. One mind, one spirit. One spirit, one mind. Gotta make the world feel it. Feel it. Gotta make the world feel it. Feel it. Yeah. Gotta make the world feel it. One body, one mind. What they must do to get out of the conditions that they find themselves in. We're out here to show our people that you must repent and keep the commandments of God in order to seek salvation. Right. Read what you got. The book of Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17. And go, get thee to them of the captivity. The most high God says go, get thee them of the captivity. Who are them of the captivity? This is something that we do as so-called blacks and Hispanics. We have disconnected ourselves from the Bible. Right. We've disconnected ourselves from the Bible and from history. Who are the people of the captivity? Who did this happen to? Bring Who was out. brought over here on cargo slave ships? The Most High God said what? Go, get thee to them of the captivity. Get thee them to the captivity. You so-called blacks and Hispanics, you have been in captivity for over four to 500 years. That's right. The Most High God has sent his prophets back on the earth to tell you what you must do to seek salvation. Read on. Unto the children of thy people. No, the children of all people. Of thy people. God says go to the children of thy people. We must go out to the streets to see them. We cannot sit back inside these churches, inside these these uh, uh, sanctuaries. You see them all over, Colleen. Where's the pastor doing? Sitting behind the pure pit saying, hey, I hope to see you next Sunday. No, God says go and get thee to them. Read. Right. And speak unto them and tell them, thus said the Lord God. No, we ought to go to them and tell them our opinion. Thus, thus said the Lord God. We ought to go to you and tell you what thus saith the Lord. That's why we have the Bible open. The Bible is known as the book of life. We're out here giving life back to the community. Read. Whether they will hear, whether they what? Will hear, or whether they will forbear. Either you want to hear it or not, God says we ought to come to you and give you warning. Tell you, thus saith the Lord. That's right. That's what we're out here doing. That's why you see the men in purple all over your city. Because we're out here to give you warning from God. We're out here to show you what you must do to come back into the good graces of God. Because we find ourselves at a lower state. Give me that in Hosea. Hosea 5 verse 15. We find ourselves in a lower state because we do not keep the commandments of God. Because we, we want to go after our fleshly lust. We want to go and, and get the bag as they say. We right. want to go and, and what? Pour out our sisters. Right. This is why we find ourselves in a lower state. Read what you got. Hosea chapter 5 and verse 15. I will go and return to my place. The Most High God says, I'm going to go and return to my place. I'm going to go uh, and, and, hey, hey, brother, go into the store. Hey, come holler at us. Come holler at us, bro. We're out here to show you what you must do to seek salvation. My brother in the red shirt, we're out here to show you how to get salvation, what you must do to come back to Jesus Christ. Come over here for a second, bro. Come over here. I got a question for you. You in the red shirt. I got a question for you, bro. What must we do as blacks in order to get out of the conditions we find ourselves in? Because anywhere you go, even throughout Colleen, you see blacks and Hispanics in a lower state. And there's a reason for that. Read what you got again. Hosea chapter 5, verse 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. God says he's going to go and return to his place till we acknowledge the offense that we have done. My brother in the green hoodie, this is for you, bro. Listen to this. God says he's going to go and return to his place until we, as so-called blacks and Hispanics, acknowledge what we have done. The covenant that we have broken. Read it again. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. Till they have realized that they have broke the covenant of God.
until, until they realize that what they must do in order to get back in their Heavenly Father's good graces. You know, something we don't understand as blacks and Hispanics, we understand if we don't follow the rules in our parents' house, that eventually they're going to tell us to get out. Right. But not knowing that our Heavenly Father, He has rules. He has rules for us. My brother right here in the Humber. In the Humber. Hey, come holler at us, bro. We're out here for you. We're out here for you. Right here, come over here. Give us, hey, give us a couple minutes of your time, bro. I want to ask you a question. I want, I want to ask you a question. Come on over here real quick. All praise to the Most High. We got to find out what we must do in order to get back. In order to come back unto God. We Awesome. Till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. Until they seek my face. The face of God is this Bible. That's right. We must seek the face of God out of this Bible. We can no longer stand around and wait for the pastor to tell us what this Bible says. Right. We can read now. That's right. We understand uh, what the Most High is saying for us to do. But we choose not to follow those things. Finish that out. And seek my face in their affliction. In their what? Okay. Affliction. Hey, my brother right here. What's your name, bro? Kerry, Kerry. Kerry? How you doing, Kerry? My name is Kelia, bro. Mm -hmm. Hey, I wanted to ask you a question, brother. Because I saw you walk, uh, uh, you come by, drive by, right? And you're hearing the words of God. We're out here preaching the words of God to our people, right? We're up here to uplift our people. Now, the Bible. Kerry, you know anything about the Bible? A little bit. A little bit, right? What do they call the Bible? What is it called? It's called a book, right? But what's in that book? Uh, people. People. Certain people. Certain people. Okay, I like that you said that. I like that you said that because the Bible deals with a certain people. Mm -hmm. All right? And that's something that we've been disconnected from. Give me Amos 3 verse 1. I want to show you something, Kerry. Because we've been taught a lot of different things out of this Bible. But what we've been taught is under the guidance of who? Of the pastor, probably. Of the pastor, probably. Right? But who taught the pastor? Uh, probably nobody. Probably some uh, slave owner. Probably generation after generation. Kerry, you are, you are a very wise man, Kerry. That's, right. That's who taught the pastor. Because when we came over here, look mm -hmm. at these signs, Kerry. We bring these out here so our people can look at them. When they when they came over to this side of the world, right? Mm -hmm. They came and they brought what? They brought with them Christianity. Mm -hmm. Right. They brought with them Catholicism, and they forced it on the people. Now we can read, Kerry. Now we can read. Now we can understand what this Bible is saying. Watch this. I want to show you something. Look at the sign right here. Like I said, we bring out these signs so we can uh, identify. Right here on this sign. Do you see what? Yeah, but nobody talks about it. Okay. This is what. This is what we got to come that's, out that's here. That's my question. To everybody, else. why? Why? Why no one brings these people up? Exactly. Why not? Right, this is why we have to come out here. That's this why, that's why I always talk about, that's why I have an argument with my dad. My dad, he's a deacon. Okay. My dad, he always, I said, who you are? He think you're a Gentile. I said, you're not a Gentile. Right. You know, you come, you, you come from a tree. Similar. You brought this here. You're not, you're not. That's right. Uh, right. You're not, you're not, you know, he think he's a, uh, 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 Ham. Like. You think he's Ham? Yeah, he's a Ham. He's a Ham. Excellent, okay. excellent. Hey, you, you came to the right place, Gary, because this is what we come out here to do, to show our people where they come from. And that's and that's what we have to do. We have to go into the book to find out who these people are. Now, when you look at this sign right here, on this side is what uh, God called you. On the other side is what the oppressor called you when he put you in chains. Where do you find your father at on this sign? Judah. Judah, right? The so-called right. American black, right? Judah means God's praise. Judah is the, is the same tribe that Christ came from. This is what we have to come out here and teach our people. You know what I'm saying? Because no one's calling you Judah no more. No, 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 they give you a name. They, they give, give you another name, name right? You started, you started what? You started with color. You started with other. Deuteronomy 28. You with, uh, Let's get that. You said you were Negroes, and now they call you, call you African American. Give me Deuteronomy 28. Call, start at verse 15. Now they call you African American. Now they call you African American. They change our names constantly. What? What does that do, Kerry? It causes confusion. Let me show you what God says. Read that. It's the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So this is Moses. Moses had just came out of Egypt. You remember when uh, he said, Pharaoh, let my people go? Right, they was in captivity under Egypt. Who were those people? 
Yeah, that was in captivity. That was with the Israelites. So now he's speaking to the Israelites after they came out of captivity. He's letting them know, if you keep my commandments, right, you keep God's commandments, you will be blessed. But there's always two sides of the coin, Kerry. He's telling them, if you break my commandments, read that last part. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So what, let me ask you this, Kerry. Is a curse a good or bad thing? Yeah, it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing, right? So there's always a punishment for breaking your father's commandments, right? There's always a punishment. Let me show you one of the punishments that you keyed in on. Give me verse 37. You keyed in on this when you walked up. Deuteronomy 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. God says we will become an astonishment. Carrie, it's an astonishment when people look at our nation today. When they look at us on social media, they see our, our, our sisters out here doing twerk challenges, right? They see our brothers out here uh, just uh, on World Star Hip Hop filming fights and stuff like that. We're not, we're not uh, people that are, have come together and will take up for one another, right? There's a lot of division. God says that's an astonishment. You're going to become an astonishment to all the other nations around you. They're going to be like, look at these people over here, right? These can't be the people of God. Read. A proverb. You know what a proverb is, Carrie? A, a name. Yep. It's a wise saying. It's a wise saying. Like when someone says, "All black people love fried chicken." That's a proverb, right? All Mexicans carry knives or got big belt buckles. It's a stereotype, exactly, Carrie. And that's what we have come. We have become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. And a byword meaning what? Anywhere you go throughout the world, they got a name for you, right? They got a different name for you. That's going to be a derogatory name, right? They call us Negroes, right? They call us niggas, right? Right? This is what they call us. That's a byword, God says, and God says that's a curse. Why did this happen, Gary? Why are we called these things? What did God say? We didn't what? We didn't keep the commandments of God. You're absolutely right. Right. And in order for us to come back to the commandments of God, we have to humble ourselves to the word of God, Carrie. Right. Now, I want to ask you something. If you heard a commandment right now, would you uh, adhere to it? Yeah. You know what I want? Yeah, I would. You would? Okay, I want you to listen to something, Carrie, because this is what we out here to do. We're out here to show our people the path, and then it's up to you to follow that path, to walk that walk, and not just talk that talk, right? I'm already, I do a little bit. All places. I, I try to fight the dietary laws. I, right. I do the dietary laws. Right. right. I still try to do the Sabbath on Sabbath. But that's where we started. We started Friday. Right. Friday evening. And then carry on to Sabbath. So exactly. I, I, I try to do all that. I like it. You, yeah, you, you, own, you own the path, Carrie. Right. You are on the path. Right. Let me show you something else. Read this. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So God says the head of every man is Christ. We're going through uh, an order. There's a hierarchy with the most high God. The head of the man is Christ, read. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is the man. You agree with that, Carrie? The head of the woman is the man. You agree with that? Yeah, I agree with that. All praises, because God said it, that's how it's gonna go. There's an order here, right? Read on. And the head of Christ it's God. Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. So the Bible says every man that's praying or prophesying in the midst of prophecy, that's what you're doing right now. You're in the midst of prophecy, Carrie. Right? Every man praying or prophesying, read, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. So right now you're in the midst of prophecy, Carrie. Having your head covered. This honor is who? Uh, Not God, but who else? There's a, there's a, read that part again. Read. Hold on. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. So who's your head? Christ. That's right. Christ. So we're in the midst of prophecy right now, and you have your head covered. If you're praying or prophesying, having your head covered, this honor is who? Christ. So what should you do? All praises. All praises. See, you see that, Carrie? That is the beginning of repentance. You see how easy that was? Give me that. Give me um, 
Yep, give me that Leviticus 21 and 5. This is what we are here to show our people. We got to show our people the commandments of God in order for them to come back and, and get in those good graces. That's the way we're going to find ourselves out of this condition that we're in, right? Let me show you something else, Kerry. Read that Leviticus 21 and 5. Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. Uh -huh. They shall not make boldness upon their heads. So when we came out of Egypt, Kerry, you said we were slaves in Egypt, right? You remember that? The Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, they were all in Egypt at one time. God told them, once they came out of Egypt, they shouldn't do the things that the Egyptians were doing. One of the things they were doing was bald in their heads, Kerry. They were bald in their heads. Read it again. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. God says he does not want his Israelite men to look like the other nations. That's right. Okay? He doesn't want them to look like the other nations. So you shouldn't bald your head. Do you take a razor yourself and bald it? Yeah, I bald it. You bald it? I thought it was. I know I couldn't cut my beard. Right, my beard. right. I, I ain't hear nobody I ain't nobody say the head. Okay, so you shouldn't, you shouldn't take a razor and bald it yourself. No, no, no. I don't understand. That. I don't understand. I shouldn't buy it. I pull out of hair. Right. Yeah, I should shave it all. Now, right. I'm actually bald. But it's, it's, it's balding. It's balding. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's balding. You can see that happening with me too, Kerry. I, I'm not... I'm not, far from it. I'm not far from it. You take his razor and cut all his hair off. I'm going to show you something. You said, you said something very heavy. Finish this out. Neither shall they shave up the corners of their beard. You said that right. You had that law correct. You shouldn't shave off the corners of your beard. You can shave it. You can trim it up. Make it look nice. Because that's how we do, right? We're going to look nice. We're going to look clean. But you shouldn't shave your hair. If, you're, if your hair's already bald, give me that. Uh, Leviticus 13, right? 40. Give me that. I'm gonna show you something because my hair is doing the same thing, Carrie. It's 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 hey, it's receding. It's receding. <laughs> it's it's going away. Bring it out. I'm gonna show you what God said about it. All right? Because I go through the same thing that you that you were just talking about. Watch this. Read Leviticus chapter 13, verse 4. Uh -huh. And the man whose hair is falling off his head. This is what you just said. You said my hair is falling off my head, right? Yeah. It's falling off my head, so what? Hey, I'm gonna help it along. Let's see if God says that's the right thing to do. Read. He is bald, yet is he clean. God says you clean. That's right. He said don't worry about that. Right. That's what I, God God had that done. That's what, that's what we have to do. Guess what, my hair is falling off. He said you clean though. You know what I'm saying that? That's Read. Right. Read. Yeah. And, he, and he that had his hair falling off from the part of his head, Toward his face. He is forehead bald. He is forehead bald. You see what I'm saying, Kerry? You see what's happening? It, it starts with seeing right here. He is forehead bald, right? You know. Yet is he clean. Yet is he clean. God says he ain't got no problem with that. I don't want you shaving the rest of it off. Why? Because it's a commandment. It's a commandment that I gave my children. Okay? That's that's what we got to understand. This is a commandment that he gave to the children of Israel. You being from the tribe of Judah, you have to keep that commandment. You understand that? You going to let it grow? I'm going to let it grow. You going to let it grow how it grows, Gary. Let it grow how it grows. You just can't take a razor and shave it all off. You can make it look good, Carrie. That's what we do. I can trim it all. You can, you can trim. That, exactly. Give me that. Give me that, bruh. Because this is what we can do. Yes, we can do these things. We can trim it up, make it look nice. Let me, excuse me. Make it look nice. But... If we start going and breaking the commandments of God that he gave us, we cannot do that. We cannot break the laws of God. But yet, are we clean if we keep the commandments? Yep, give me that. The book of 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 24. Bring it out. And Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king. And he had neither dressed his feet nor trimmed his beard. So this is a, a royalty. King Saul was the first king of Israel. All right? His son, Mephibosheth, it says talking about he neither trimmed his beard, right? Nor he made he didn't he didn't uh, clean himself up before he came down to greet the king. That is something that we did not do, right? So this is why he's bringing that out. Good morning. Read. Nor trimmed his beard, uh -huh. nor washed his clothes. For the day the king departed, until the day he came again in peace. Give me Ezekiel five verse one. Let me show you one more thing, because this is something that we do. We always we, we're always going to clean ourselves up. Right. Make ourselves look good, but we cannot go against the commandments of God. Yeah. Otherwise, God's not with us. This is why, hey, this is why this happened to us, Carrie. Mm -hmm. This is why this happened to us. This is why we found ourselves in in uh, in chains. 
You see what I'm saying? Do you, do, you, do you think you're still in captivity now? Are we still in captivity? Excellent question, Kerry. Excellent question. And we're going to answer I that. Do. We're going to answer that. That's an excellent question. You're absolutely right. Let me get this one scripture. Read this. Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 1. Uh -huh. And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife. Take thee a barber's razor. A barber's razor. We was always cleaning ourselves up. But we were not going against the commandments of God. We can clean yourself up, you know what I'm saying? Trim it up, make it look nice, right? We give yourself uh, like an uh, edge up, stuff like that, right? Read. And cause it to pass upon thy head and upon thy beard. Then take the balance to weight and divide the hair. And divide the hair. We always had haircuts, right? We always were looking clean, Gary. Now to answer your question, give me that in uh, Baruch 3, verse 8. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how our men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.